Good morning. This is Saturday, July 18th, and I'd like to wish Lakin Waitley a happy birthday. He is three years old. I can't believe it. He's three years old. I see pictures of him on Facebook. He looks like a little man. But happy birthday, Lakin. Uh, have mom give you a hug from me, okay? When she hugs you, she's going to tell you that's from Pastor. So happy birthday, Lakin. Have a good day. This is uh, entitled, The Mystery of Believing. This is Acts 9, 5. Paul said, Who are you, Lord? Through the miracle of redemption, Saul of Tarsus was instantly changed from a strong-willed and forceful Pharisee into a humble and devoted bondservant of Jesus Christ. There is nothing miraculous or mysterious about the things we can explain. We control what we are able to explain. Consequently, it is, only the it is only natural to seek an explanation for everything, and that's true, it is. It is not natural to, to obey, yet it is not necessarily sinful to disobey, unless God has told you directly to do it. There can be no real disobedience, nor any moral virtue in obedience, unless a person recognizes the higher authority of the one, Jesus, giving the orders. If this recognition does not exist, even the one giving the orders may view the other person's disobedience as freedom. That's, that's self. He's describing self very well there. If one rules another by saying, you must do this and you will do that, he breaks the human spirit, making it unfit for God. A person is simply a slave for obeying unless behind his obedience is the recognition of the Holy God. And that comes through falling in love with God through Jesus Christ and salvation. The closer we draw to the Savior through the Holy Spirit, the more we love our Lord. And the more we love our Lord, the, the more we want to obey. I think of it as uh, like children when they want to obey their parents because they love them. And we've all had those moments when our little guy or our little gal will go and do something and turn around and look at us. And they just love us and we love them back. Many people begin coming to God once they stop being religious because there's only one master of the human heart. That's Jesus Christ and not religion. But woe is me if after seeing him, I still will not obey. That's Isaiah 6, 5 again, where Isaiah sees him in his temple. Jesus will never insist that I obey. But if I don't, I have already begun to sign the death certificate of the Son of God in my soul. In other words, we've already begun to separate in the relationship with Jesus. When we say no to what he's asked us to do, the separation begins. When I stand face to face with Jesus Christ and say, I will not obey, he will never insist. But when I do this, I am backing away from the recreating power of his redemption. In other words, when we're saved and redeemed, that power in us will create in us what we need to obey. I never thought I could be a pastor way back when. But the recreating power of God within me through salvation shows me that I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. It makes no difference to God's grace what an abomination I am if I'll only come to the light. But woe is me if I refuse the light after I see it. That's John 3. You know, there's so much joy in abandoning our, our will to God's will. And the question is, will we? In today's world, will we do as the Lord leads us to do? Or will we see it, turn away from it, and say, I will not obey? My prayer is that we won't do that, that we will say, I will obey. Whatever God asks us to do in today's world, we'll do it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for uh, the uh, conversion of Paul that day on the road to Damascus. And I pray, Lord, we would all have that kind of a thought process in our lives, that whatever it is you would call us to do, we would step forth and do it. Lord, I pray again the Isaiah 6 moment, where we would see God in his holy temple, high and lifted up, and we would say, here am I, send me. Thanks again, Lord, for redeeming us and trusting us with this call. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless. Have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow at church.